Majesty. His Majesty is so cool. You understand? He's so cool, right? Um, to these to these negative heats of the fallen nature of man, to anger, wrath. You know, as man does, he walks and he manifests and testifies to his beloved son, our beloved Savior, Jesus Christos, in word and in deed, right? In word and in deed. And I was just meditating that whole point about um, him being cool in that sense. And people might say, well, what do you mean, right, um, by that, that he is so cool, right? He is so cool. He does not allow um, um, the human fallenness, right? And this is where we can see, right, and receive, right, in the righteous man and through the righteous man, the righteous man, the righteous testimony of Kedamawi Hala Salasi testifies to us of the righteous Jesus Christos in spirit and in truth. And that unlike the 2000 years, that um, that short time or that little, as it says, a little while going on in our Selassie Shroud of Torin um, evidence, right? Uh, Shroud of Torin evidence, we probably name it something uh, to that effect, but You'll see what the name is, and if you're watching this, then then you've recognized the name, right? And hallelujah. But let's continue right here. We was, we was at John, began off with John 16, 16, right? Where he says, a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. What does that mean? I go to the Father, right? I go to the Father. Now, there's a Western Gentile. Right or in counterfeit Christianity, that means so many things, but the truth is not found in that because the true Trinity or the true teaching of the Trinity, according to the real roots, when the rabbis, when they admitted, when they believed the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, when they understood, when the true Jews, right? That's why the Bible says the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not. And we're not just only speaking of racially as the Ethiopian Hebrews and according to the humanity, but even according to the true teaching of the Bible. And this is why many of them still do not receive Yeshua, Jesus Christos, right? This is, this is one of the reasons. It's, it's dual. It's twofold, right? One is the racism that caused them to fall from the grace, his graceism, if we can say that, you understand, in grace. Cause him to fall from his gracism, right? Is the racism. Because to them, nothing good can come from Africa, as they like to say. Nothing good, according to them. But let's go forward right here. So they were desirous to ask him something, but they didn't. So he said to them, Do ye, do ye, do y'all, do y'all inquire among yourselves of that I said? Obviously, they did. They inquired among themselves. So what can we learn about this? We also many times will inquire among ourselves. And when none gets the true answer, then we begin to quarrel amongst ourselves. Because the key is that John is not the author of confusion, right? He's not the author of confuse Zion, of confusion, right? But he's the author of the fusion, right? The author of the fusion. And from the fusion, we get the light. He says, verily, verily, amen, amen, I say to you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. You see, this is why a lot of people don't get what black people, what I and I ancestors have gone through. Yours, because they were too busy rejoicing. And then if we talk about, well, how the past really was, you know, and we explore these things like nigger, nigga, the N word. The N-word is all summed up in being the byword of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? And it had nothing to do with, well, so what if a sticks and stones may break my bones, but names, once you know your true name, th those other names don't cannot harm you, right? But if you are taken bondage, taken captive, right? Taken captive by a false mentality or a misinterpretation, right, through European Gentile racism, 
right? Concerning the person of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, concerning his people. That's why it says in Revelation that great blasphemy would be in the latter days against those who dwell in heaven, right? And his people, right? And his people and his holy city. So he says, verily, verily, I say to you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. But I and I sorrow is turned into joy. A woman, now he connects this with the woman, the righteous woman, right? A woman, when she is in travail, have sorrow. When she's in the birthing pangs, she have sorrow. Now, this is very interesting. Let's see if we can uh, bring this over right here, right? I mean, similar to this right here. In the birthing pangs, right? In the birthing pangs, she has sorrow. So a woman, now this woman here, you need to connect, right, both in the case of the father or the son and the father, right? You need to connect this with Revelation, right? Revelation chapter 12, where it says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now, since we were created in the image of the heavenly man, the trifold man, the trinity, spirit, soul, and body, the third that would fall as above, so below would be the, the physical reality, the material reality. There'll be a separation between the the Holy Spirit, the true spirit, the true iron, the true psycho psychology or soul, right? And the way people live in their carnal, right? They, they will be enslaved in the carnal mind, in other words. And it casts them to the earth. That's connected with the sorrow, post-70 AD. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to de be delivered. Now that dragon is interesting. You look at coat of arms. And London and England, which was the head of the Leviathan and and the white supremacy and the daughter of Babylon, America, and how all that kind of comes together. And then they have a symbol where they say, don't tread on me. And it's a serpent. But then they talk about their Christians. And that's not a serpent on the pole. That's not a Jesus Christos even or, or, or even Moses serpent. So what is it they, that they're talking about? They're talking about the dragon standing before the woman, which was ready to be de delivered. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Then it now brings the child, the man child, a lij teferi, right? The Christ or the anointed of that anointed Davidic lineage. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up, right? And her child was caught up. Let's do this right here. A child was caught up to God and to his throne. So what is the throne of God? The throne of God on earth is the throne of great King David. And David had a son named Solomon. Solomon had a son named David. And it was David the second or Minulik the first, Kedamawi Minulik, who established the kingdom reestablished the kingdom of David in the highlands of Ethiopia. That's why Ethiopia comes in close um, proximity and correspondence to key areas of biblical prophecy and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared. So that woman, that true Christianity, we can say, fled into the wilderness even into Ethiopia or Africa, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now, that's the revelation that was shown. Remember, it was the revelation of the father who the father gave to the son and the son sent his angel to shew Right, or to show to John, to give to John, and John now was to show us what the vision that he saw that originally is the father's vision. 
This is why when Christ said to them, they said, do you, will you now after the crucifixion restore the kingdom to Israel? He says, it's not for you to know, right? The, the things in time basically that are in the hand and the will of the father, of the person of the father. But now, of course, one could say, but you have gone to the father. Exactly. Right. It says, uh, verily, verily, I say to you that ye shall weep and lament the lamentation. Right. Four hundred plus or after five hundred years. But the world, the world system. Right. Or spiritual Egypt shall Sodom and Egypt shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful. But your sorrow will turn will be turned into joy. Your sorrow is turned into joy when you know the truth, when you receive his grace, when you receive salvation. Right. The sorrow. Right. Being sorry and sorrowful. Right. Um, but what says by his stripes, we are healed. Like, let's go to that part. That's what the Ethiopian eunuch. How interesting it was the Ethiopian eunuch who has this testimony right here. Who hath believed? Who has admitted our report? Who has believed Rastafari report concerning his majesty? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when he, we sh shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. Now, this is in Christianity is said to be concerning concerning the person of the Son, Jesus Christos, right? Um, and the crucifixion, right? He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That means that his divine nature, right, took on our humanity and experienced what we experience. In other words, he lived as a man and for our sake became a man. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. You know, like the lost sheeple. They don't really want to look on the black Christ, on, on the black Messiah. Many, you know, because that's the same thing that happened with the Israelites in the wilderness and the brazen serpent. And that's why they are not healed. Right. In spite of all that they want to say and all the stray ways that they try, they they hid as it was their faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. So as they did to the son, so they do to our Abba, our father, Kedamawi Hala Selassie, the lost sheep or the black people. When the 70s came on, they, they turned away, you know, the 60s and, and the civil rights and other things. As long as they could cut a deal with their former slave master and stay underneath the curse. Right. There's there's no blessing in that sense under under the curse. Right. The curse. Right. And it's only looking upon him. Right. It's only looking upon him and not just speaking physically, but spiritually. Surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. This is who his majesty testifies to to us. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace upon him. And that's interesting there about our peace, because peace, if, if, if you have no peace, then you're insecure. Think about it. Insecurity basically means a lack of peace. Why are black people so insecure? You can, you can, um, do a preaching or a sermon on that, connecting it with Yeshua being our peace and, and failure to look upon the black Messiah or the Messiah in his true humanity. And with his stripes, we are healed. See, with his stripes, when we, when we recognize the, the true faith, the going from darkness or from ignorance to the true light in the King of Kings and through Christ is on. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, right? His own way. Look at all the denominations of black folks and their Christianities. And then look at all the different um, dogmas that they believe in. And then look at how far astray that is from a right and exact interpretation of the Bible, right? And behind those false, those astray ways, we find as a common denominator, 
um, either European ignorance, era, envy, racism, or or outright or covert white supremacy. So even the Gentiles, many of the white folks, all of them have been deceived by that, that have been deceived by that, believe that. And Yahweh hath laid on him the iniquity of I and I all. He was downpressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Imagine if he did open his mouth. Right? As a divine son of God, as a son of God. As was, there's a song that said that he could call down 10,000 angels. Right? Imagine if his majesty had opened his mouth in that sense. You know, <laughs> or heaven and earth and the sea would have responded, but he is brought, brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation, the generation of the King of Kings and Christ? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. That's why they say Jah dead. They say Selassie I dead. They've cut him off from the land of the living because of his living testimony to the true Christ. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, the transgression of the careless Ethiopian, the transgression of the lost sheep, black sheep of the house of Israel. And he made his grave with the wicked, where they want to lump his majesty up with all of all of their so-called dictators. Yet the truth, they have not believed the report. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. That's why they do it, because he had done no violence. Ra neither, neither, neither was any deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He hath put to grief when thou shall make his soul an offering for sin. There's only one offering for sin. His majesty testifies to his sacrifice, to his offering, to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, the way, the truth, and the life. He shall see his seed. Right? He shall see his seed. We as Rastafari, the call, chosen and faithful, those who are responding to what his true call is, those who choose what he choose, and then carry through and be faithful right? in, in, in his goodwill, with his strength. The joy of Jah is I and I strength. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong days. And the pleasure of Yahweh, he who be who he be, shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, shall be satisfied by his knowledge, by the knowledge of the King of Kings in Christ, shall my righteous servant justify many, shall, shall vanquish um, 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 guilt, sin, death, and, 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 and the grave. The, the, the guiltiness that rests upon their conscience through, through the knowledge of the King of Kings. Shall my righteous servant justify, shall Iesu, Yeshua, justify, make right many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul to death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. So we laugh at them when they say all the error that they do. We laugh at them because Jah laughs. Therefore, we are called according to his call and we choose what he choose. To laugh at them when they when they want to um, blame Hala Tulasi first. <laughs> you know what I mean? When they want to spread all sort of lies and, trans and, 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 and blasphemies and numbering him with transgressors. And he shall... And he says, he bear the sin of many, right? That's why the careless Ethiopians always blame Halas Lassie first. But if you think about it for a moment, you say, what, what king, what man in human history has done in 40 years for people, for the people, for God's people, like he did for the Ethiopians, what he did? And not just the Ethiopians only, but even for Ainai as black Israels, Ethiopian Hebrews in the North Carolina. And not only Ainai only, but for the righteous among the Gentiles in every nation who hath done this and then take no credit of himself, but give all credit to Jesus Christ, to Yeshua HaMoshiach, and even call him his son. 
he bear the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors, bought them a time, a probationary time, 75, what, to, to presently, right, for, what, a half hour or so, time to consider and hopefully repent. That's where he throws Jezebel in the bed. Remember when it says he throws Jezebel in the bed for lovers and everything to see whether she will repent? You understand? And she does not repent. But what this leads to is Isaiah chapter 54, where it says that Israel, the restored wife of Yahweh, that Israel, right? That the lost sheep of the house of Israel are restored as a wife of Yahweh. Now, what's interesting is that, and this is how it connects with the, with the true interpretation, the mosaic interpretation of the Egyptian mysteries. Um, or saw on the throne, there are two women standing behind him, Neptis and, and Oset, right? Um, or, or Hathor in certain ones, Hathor, um, and, 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 uh, Hit Haru, which would be in Ethiopic, the, the sister of Hit of the Haru, of the chosen one, and Oset, or I will say the true woman, right? That, um, the true woman, that uh, the Father or Christ, we can say, or God, let's keep it simply for those who still are unclear on the Jewish Trinity, right? Keep it in a kind of a singularity right now. Um, that he has two wives. He has two wives. This is what's kind of very interesting right here. He has to, and it's very clear in the scripture. Now, when he put away Israel, he chose Ethiopia. And, and that's where Zion, right? That's where Zion was located. That explains the prophetical, right, aspects of what we know in the natural, right? Israel, the restored wife of Yahweh. Now, after all of this, after recognizing, right, after recognizing um, our salvation, after recognizing the vicarious sacrifice of the Son of God, of Hamushi, of Christos, of Yahweh's Baria, of his baria. Mm -hmm. It says right here, sing. So the responsa, the real responsa to the good news, to the true gospel of his majesty is song. The real response to Yahweh's gospel and his good news, right, is song. That's what's very interesting right here. That's the response. The response is sing because th these chapters are, Somewhat thought the chapters were put in later to roughly divide certain matter from other matter, right? And some context from other context. So right after that, Isaiah 53, we go to Isaiah 54. If we read it straight through as it was in the early parchment and manuscripts, it says, Sing, O barren, right? O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing. And cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith Yahweh. But then it goes on to say, enlarge the place of thy tent. Now, in this time of so much uh, tribulation, the righteous, the faithful people are doing like spiritual jujitsu. That when they say all manners of evil against I and I for his majesty's namesake, we rejoice, right? We'd be exceedingly glad because that's his word. That's, that shows and proves that we're in his faith, in the true faith. And then the angels, the angels, the ministers of I and I who are, who are ministers for I and I, who are ears of his salvation, go to work for I and I to fulfill his word because we show by our faith that we are worthy. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the cords of thine habitations. Spear not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. So we see the awakening, the Rastafari awakening. Some call it the black awakening, but then some try to blaspheme the black awakening with the Gentile vampirism and their negative mind states, right? And thy seed shall inherit, look what it says, thy seed, thy race, right? Thy black seed, right? Shall inherit the Gentiles, the 
Gentile nations, the, Euro, the European, Anglo-American, Anglo-European nations, right? And others, et al. Inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. If that doesn't seem to you to speak of repatriation, I don't know what will, right? Fear not. Don't fear. Oh, well, they such a, because you're not walking in their fear, we're walking in Jah faith. For thou and Jah way and Jah discipline, for thou shall not be ashamed. We should not be ashamed. See, if a bun out shame, right? When you receive the true name and the true revelation of the King of Kings in Christ, neither be thou confounded. That's coming out of Babylon, coming out of confusion, for thou shall not be put to shame. So no matter how much they want to shame us in their Babylonian world, world system, we're in the world, we're not of their Babylonian world system, for thou shall shalt forget the shame of thy youth. So th th there's, there's some important teaching in this. I'm going to go over this, but just for example, where it says to forget the shame of thy youth. You can take it and should take it personally, right? Because there's some things that the devil, that the Satan, satanic mind state want to make you feel ashamed of in your youth when you were ignorant, when you did not know of the salvation of the King of Kings in Jesus Christos Getachin. So this word, right, and faith in this word, word burn, burn, burn up that. The words sound powerful. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. Then we can also look at this as speaking to black people in the youth of this, of this new people in the diaspora, right? Um, the shame of thy youth. Or even Ethiopia should look at this in that same sense of what she did and what they did in their adolescence, their juvenile state. Right. With his majesty. Right. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more of thy widowhood. Right. Where they said we don't want no more of his majesty. Kill this Ethiopian. We want we want three husbands, Karl, Marx and Lenin. Fire bun that. Right. Um, or, or any of the other false gods that they have chosen for thy maker is thine husband. Right, the maker of Martin, of faithful, of righteous Ethiopia is the real husband, the husbandman, Yahweh of host is his name. This is interesting. The name Yahweh of host in the Hebraic is another way of saying Kadamawi Hala Salasi or Hila Salasi. The power or the L of the Trinity of the host is his name. And thy redeemer, the redeemer, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach, the holy one, the Kedus, he is the holy one of Israel, the God of the whole earth. Selassie, earth's right for ruler, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called, right? The God of the whole earth. For Yahweh hath called thee as a woman forsaken, grieved in spirit. The wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God, for a small moment have I forsaken thee. That's what it seems like for Ethiopia and the righteous black people. It seems as though she's forsaken. They say, where, Rastafari, where's your God? For a small moment, your response, for a small moment, he has forsaken us. For a small moment, but with great mercies will I gather thee, will he gather I now with great mercies in a little rot, rottenness, a, a little redness. I hid my face on the last pictures of his majesty where he's hiding his face, right? I, I, I hid my face, my panim from thee for a moment, but with everlasting eternal kindness. Chesed, will I have mercy on thee, saith Yahweh, thy redeemer. For this is as, and here's the key with this day and age, this is as the waters of Noah, of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah, of Noah, shall no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. So he's not, he's not angry with I and I that, that accept his good news and the gospel of Selassie I Christ. He's no longer angry with I and I. He does not rebuke I and I for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. Isn't that also in Revelation? 
about the mountains departing, every island fled away. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, but still he is kind to thee. Neither shall the covenant, the al-kidan, the word, sound and power, agreement of my peace, of my peace, my shalom, be removed, saith Yahweh, that hath mercy, right, that hath mercy on on thee, right, on thee. Let me go on a little bit more with this right here, right, um, the security and blessing of restored Israel, black Israel restored in the black Christ. Verse 11, O thou afflicted, Toss with tempest and not comforted. Isn't that the state of the lost sheep or of black people? Amen. Behold, look and see. Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed, right? To open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. But says, Behold, I will lay thy stones with fear colors and lay thy foundations with sapphires. And I will make thy windows of agates. All these are precious stones right here. And we know these precious stones come out of Africa. And thy gates of carbuncles. And all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught. This is why the youth ministry is so very important. That all of thy children shall be taught of Yahweh. He who be who he be. And great shall be the peace, the shalom of thy children. In righteousness, in the Siddiq or Zadok, if you please, shall thou be established. Thou shall be far from oppression, far from downpression. For thou shall not fear and from terror and all the Babylonian terrorism. For it shall not come near thee. The I, I and I and I, and the King of Kings and through his Christ. Amen. Behold, look and see, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee, against I and I, the I, against I and I, he's speaking to us, we have to receive it, shall fall for thy sake, shall fall for thy sake. And Rastafari have been chanting to them down ever since beginning of the kingdom A.D. Behold, I have created the smith, right? Even Mr. Smith, the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster or the abaddon, right? The waster to destroy. So Jot is saying that don't fear who they're going to gather together, right? In the latter days, that's what they say. Everybody join up together in this, in this so-called multi Babylonian culturalism and schism and everything. They gather together, but it's not, they're trying to do a world order, but not by the King of Kings, right? The sign and the, and, and the seal, but it says whosoever shall, shall gather together against thee, right? To gather together against the righteous, the righteous African, the righteous black people, the righteous people of the King of Kings and in his Christ shall fall for thy sake. Behold, Jai is saying, I have created the smith, right? Like the metal smith, the iron smith, the smith, the Mr. Smith, right? It's interesting because the Beta Israel used to be the smiths of Ethiopia. They were the ones, I guess as being even black Jewish people, Jah revealed those sciences that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, whether pots and pans or spoons or knives or guns or whatever. You understand that, that instrument for his work and I have created the waster, right, to destroy, right, the waster to destroy, but it's not. So when we see destructions upon destructions and downpression, we have to, we have to sing. We have to cry out. We have to break forth into singing. We have to cry aloud, right? We have to rejoice, right? In the salvation of the King of Kings Christ. Because verse 17, which sums it up perfectly, it says, no weapon that is formed against thee, against the eye, I and I and I shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee, the I and I and I, in judgment, they want to judge Rastafari, Hala Selassie's children. Thou, it says that I and I shall condemn. 
we overrule them, we overturn them. This, it says, this is the heritage, i.e. the I and I divine heritage. This is the heritage of the servants, of the servants of Yahweh, of he who be who he be, his divine majesty. Now it's interesting because the father is saying, Yahweh the father is saying that the son is my servant. He's the one that's going to go to the, the tree or the cross for thy salvation. He's going to be I and I lamb. Yes, is the lamb that the father has provided for his people, for we, his people whom he loves. So he is that servant, right? Then in the fullness right here is saying, this is the heritage or the inheritance of the servants. So we are now servants, but he Jesus, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth, he is that template. So when his majesty, Kedemah, we highly salah, see the conquering line, the tribe of Judah, the elect of God. And yes, he's the elect of God, right? Because the Son and the Holy Spirit elect him, choose him. You, you know what I'm saying? So we can say the elect of himself if it's properly understood and can give an answer to one who seeks an answer and not just, uh, you know, not just a, a, a attitude, you know what I mean? Because you, you're saying something, you don't know what you're saying. And the king of kings, right? The king of kings of Ethiopia, because Ethiopia is not just a country in the Davidic covenant. Ethiopia is an empire. It has many countries in Ethiopia and in the greater, the greater Davidic kingdom. Because the earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof, right? This is the heritage of the servants. So we learn to be servants in learning, uh, learning the knowledge of the number one son, the beloved son of our Abba Father. And, and he be Jesus Christos, right? So we now become the servants of Yahweh, of the Holy Trinity, of he who be who he be, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through the example of the Son, right? Be as little children, grow up, grow in grace. And their righteousness, remember Yeshua is our righteousness, is of me. So I and I righteousness is Jesus Christos, and I and I Jesus Christos is the Christ of his majesty, not the Christ of the counterfeits or the antichrist who's whose word and deed go in opposite directions, right? Um, so I and I righteousness, their righteousness, speaking of I and I, when we say now, when, when we now take the their righteousness and receive it, we say I and I, our righteousness, right? Or, or, or our righteousness is of me and that me is of him, right? He who be who he be, his imperial majesty, saith the Lord, saith Yahweh, saith he who be, who he be. Now I had segued right there in Isaiah following the inner, the inspiration, you know, of the Holy Spirit right there. Yet I was in John 16, 16, and we began off in the part one. So if you're checking this out, this is a part two, speaking on um, Hila Selassie and the Shroud of Torin Revelation, right? The Shroud of Torin Revelation. Because I heard both sides of the argument, ones who say it's, it's fake, it's false, and the others who say it's true. And the ones who say it's true bring forth more evidence that those who say it's fake can't really provide any evidence to disprove it. But that's not the reason why we claim this so, so much. In fact, our one reason is basically what I and I spiritual eye, right? Both what we see with our eye, but what we see with the eye, the true eye of the soul, the true eye the true new eye, the singularity, the healthy eye, right? We see that this is a testimony of Haile Selassie. And I was, uh, in the first part, I talked about how the Roman Catholic Church who had taken, you know, a, a, a hostile takeover of the early church and all the relics are, in fact, they had taken this too, right? Um, the Shroud of Torin, and they made a three-dimensional um, bronze kind of a, a statue, of, of this, like laying down of, of the shroud. And we saw a Fox News report the other day. We're going to try to get this video out there. It's a rare video. I don't think they've shown it ever since. And you really have to check out the video because they even said that based on, on, on the shroud, 
um, Jesus, Yeshua would have been of a, 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 of short of stature. And that was, that's, that's very, it's almost as though the shroud of Torin was kind of the missing body of his majesty that they put out the bone lies to, and they had three funerals and everything because many Ethiopians, you know, careless Ethiopians want closure. The only closure really of, 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 of the, of, of the sin of the transgression is receiving the true testimony of the King of Kings Christ in the Rastafari revelation. Now let's just conclude right here, or at least connect this. Once again, we will go back to the, the weeping part and lamenting part, which is our experience, but how, how the world will rejoice yet our sorrow, we'll be sorrowful, but our sorrow will be turned into joy. So I segued to Isaiah chapter 53, where the true understanding and receptivity, receiving that word and recognizing, that's what the Ethiopian eunuch even said. So this is another relation to Ethiopia. How ironic, that's what the Ethiopian eunuch was reading. And the Ethiopian was not a Gentile, as some, as some lost in translationers say, that Ethiopian was a Hebrew because he went to Jerusalem at a Hebrew or Jewish high holy time. So he's part of that remnant that originally was planted right, uh, in Ethiopia, part of that Tekla Hymenote, not the man Tekla Hymenote, but the, the deed Tekla Hymenote. In other words, the deed of the Tekla Hymenote, the true planting of the faith, where it speaks about that woman, when she is in travail, have sorrow. Because her hour is come, but as soon as but as soon as she is delivered of the child, that man child, Lij Teferi, right, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man or a man child is born into the world. In other words, it's saying a true man. All of us who, who, who connect to the systemic anomaly or the fall of Adam, the fall of man, the fall of the primordial black man, um, cannot be say that we, we are true man. We, we're not true man. We're man under the fall. We're man with a systemic anomaly. But in the new birth, we become the true man because of the true man who was born in the world, even because of and through the birth of Jesus Christos, right? The birth of our Lord and Savior, which is really the real um, reason, right, for the season when we're speaking of uh, Christmas, right, or, or really Lidet, right, Lidet. But he wasn't born on 25th of December. It would have been more approximate to September 11th, right? September 11th is the birth of Jesus Christos, as well as the birthday of the real Kedistin Gamaria, the real um, mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. And ye, and we know that from the parchments and from the faith that was once delivered, not the Romanists and the European white Anglo-Saxon Protestant rewritings, right? And ye now therefore have sorrow but I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you. How, how, how many times and in how many ways, right, has Babylon tried to take our joy from us? Oh, how does I see this? Oh, how does I see that? And many of us who are more the researcher type, you know, and we would have used our skills in many of the Babylonian industries, but Jack called us out of that. So we use those same skills that Babylon would have paid enough dollars to us to, to work for them like Moses instead of being the son or the daughter of Pharaoh of the Babylonian system and have them son us, we choose our true father in Christ, right? We research these things, you know, keeping not an open mind, but, you know, a, a receptive mind to the truth, right? And keeping a receptive mind to the truth, we just find them to be liars and everything, you know? And ye now therefore have sorrow, but many who don't know the truth, they have sorrow because they believe the lie. And I will see you again, and he will see us again. So Christ here is speaking in John chapter 16, verse 22. And your heart shall rejoice. Our consciousness, our, 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 our consciousness shall, shall rejoice. The inner, the innermost of the inner man shall rejoice. 
and your joy, that joy no man taketh from you. They haven't been able to take the joy of his majesty, the joy of Hala Selassie the first from I and I, right? And neither can they because they can't take the truth. They can't overcome the truth. That's why I said the line of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed, right? The line of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed. And let me just move this over here, right here. And then um, let's segue this right here. Okay, actually, we'll, we'll do this like this. Um, wait just a moment. Okay, All right. Because this is important right here. Okay, so... All right, let's just zoom in. Okay, so we're going to conclude over here, right? Conclude over here in the scripture because this is now he's pointing to the second, as ones might say, the second advent, right? And we see this second advent, right, being fulfilled, right, in the King of Kings. Now, a lot of people dispute because they have a faulty eschatology, right? And it's already been shown how many even white folks believed in the lot you know, like there was a great disappointment. There was all these other kind of things where they said that God is coming tomorrow and the Jim Jones and all these other kind of thing. Uh, it, it, you know, so Rastafari already has proven the integrity, right, of the spiritual and the revelation of Christ, right, in, by a new name, in that new name, right? Um so let's continue from right here, right? Let's continue from right here. It says, so he says, he will see us and ye now. So then nearly 2000 years ago, they had sorrow, but he says, I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you. So don't let misinterpretation about what some people claim his majesty meant. You understand by what he said, he said what he said. And he meant by what he said, what he meant by what he said and what they say that he say, said, he didn't, he did not say. And we've gone over that as well. But he speaks to warning us as Rastafari about about the, the false theology that man is emanated from a deity, which when you start to connect the dots, that links to this, the, the, the false the New World Order, Helen Blavatsky and that whole racist um, Aryan philosophy that even Brother Macy, um, Gerald Macy, um, really really gives us a lot of the factual evidence when we get into those other st studies right there. I just pointed that out right there. But no man taketh, right? And our joy, no man taketh from I and I. And in that day, now I was saying that there will be another day. He's speaking of another day. You see this in Hebrews where it says, he would not have spoken of another day unless there would be another day. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. So us asking, even the Babylonians and others asking, uh, some Rastafari I say such and such. I mean, there are so many incidences where his majesty has actually taken on these questions, you know, that ones have, have asked concerning, oh, these Rastafaris, they believe this and this and this of you. Um, what sayest, you know, what sayest thou to this, right? And he said, leave them alone. They know what they're doing. But yet he also warned us about emanation philosophy. But he did not say, he didn't mention Christ there. He did not mention uh, even reincarnation there. Mm -hmm. What he mentioned is that emanation. He introduced a key word to us or the translator very, very properly was able to translate what his majesty said in Amharic. And we haven't been able to isolate the Amharic part. So those who have the technical skills can go over there and see if they can isolate the Amharic part out of there, you know, the layers of that sound so we can hopefully translate his majesty's direct word. And hopefully they have not even lied to us a little bit more. But what the spirit shows us is to be aware of emanation philosophy because that's where the false evolution, this new age, that's the, that's the Eurocentric new age. That's the spiritual wickedness. Uh -huh. That's the spiritual wickedness that has crept in in these latter days, in these latter days and time. Also, brothers and sisters, let's pray for Africa, man. Pray for what's going on in Africa. 
the the, the um, South Sudan, Ethiopia on the border, because we should know that they're still at it. You know, they're at it again. They're, they're, they're disturbing God's property, right? Even in a more intimate way by focusing on that region, you know, Africa in general, and in particular, um, um, Northeast Africa and East Africa and that region over there. Just pray for, you know, pray for them in faith, my brothers and sisters, the prayer of a righteous man and availeth much. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father. Notice what it says, Christ says to us that in that day, you will ask me nothing, ask the person of the Son nothing, but whatsoever you will ask the person of the Father, right? You will ask the Father in my name, in Jesus' name, he will give you whatever we ask, Abba, in the name of Jesus Christos, in Isis, he will give I and I. Hitherto have he asked nothing in my name. So up to that point in the ministry, or in in the ministry of of of, of Jesus, roughly two thousand years ago, right? They had asked nothing, but he says here, ask, and ye shall receive. Ye shall kebele. You will receive that your joy, so that our joy may be full. So what's the point of Yeshua? What's the point of our Black Lord and Savior? It's our joy. It's like we saw the video. My name is Caesar Borgias. That's not my name. But that's the name of the exposed DVD video, right? Um, Caesar Bogier's thing. Um, it talked about, I think one of the Nation of Islam brothers was saying, showing a picture of the Klan, and they had a big Jesus Saves banner in the background. And he said that the Jesus that these people believe in, these people who, who lynch a nigga, you understand? And it's not the fact that they call us nigga that was, that was the real hurtful part. It's because they lynched the nigga because they killed, murdered, crucified, humiliated, uh, uh, mutilated, you, you know what I mean? People, even while they were alive, human beings that their Faustian bargain with the devil would not let them recognize were human beings. You see, it's like they say black people are animals and then they want to have sex with bl black people. You, you over that right there, that's like bestiality. Even though it's not a beast they really had sex with, it's a black person but because their mind tells them this, therefore it shows what their desire really is about. You understand? Pray for them too. Pray that they, that they will be saved, that they would receive salvation, right? Because Father is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come you know, to salvation, receive salvation. These things have I spoken to you in Proverbs. So, so the things before were um, mythological from mythos, mythos, or word pictures. He used word pictures, children's stories, proverbs, parables, right? But I shall shew you plainly, his majesty has shown us plainly concerning the nature, the spiritual nature of the Father. Right? In other words, in the flesh, right? In his holy person, he has shown us the, the true spirit, the true, the true meaning, the true essence of the true gospel of God. That the true gospel, the true message of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, is true, but the enemies have, have sought to make an end of him and an end of the true testimony through their whitewash, through their racism, through their false doctrines so forth through their being deceived and taken into bondage and captivity in, in this spiritual Egypt, right? And put under the burdens and the bondage. At that day, so once again, he's speaking to a certain day, ye shall ask in my name and I say not to you. This is the interesting part. He's saying that ye shall ask in my name. So even if one were to recognize this and go to the Father, go to his majesty and ask him, now, even in the person, even in the flesh, he says, and I say not to you that I will pray the Father for you. So what he's saying in this day, if one were spiritually mature to recognize this word in its true interpretation, in the proper translation and context, and were to go to his majesty and recognize the spirit and recognize the face of the Father and ask, as he says, in that day, you shall ask in my name. Right? In other words, in the name of Jesus Christos, right? You shall ask Adamawi Hala Salasi in the name of Jesus Christos. He is saying that 
I say not to you that I will pray the father for you. It's not going to be as he would pray the father for us. 2000 years ago, right? During that at that advent, right? That it's not going to be like that in a day to come. So he's speaking of a new day and Adi's Zemin. For why, why will he not pray the father for us? You're not saying that he doesn't pray the father for us, but why in that day? For the father himself, that himself is the key word, Arasu. For the father himself, right? Loveth you, right? Because you have, ye have loved me and have amained or believed my men admitted as truth that I came out from Elohim, that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father. Now, what's interesting about the word coming forth or coming forth in a sense is that it could be interpreted as emanation, but not according to the faulty doctrine that, that the Son comes forth, springs from the Father, but man was created. You know what I'm saying? Man was created. He sprung forth from the Father through the womb, right? Through the womb of this then Gulmarium through the black, that, that righteous black mother, right? And therefore took on our humanity, right? And overcame the, the, the world, the flesh and the devil, right? For our salvation that when we admit in him that, that, that victory is, is, is transferred to us in faith and we overcome by him and through him and through faith in him. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, now remember the first thing that they didn't understand. We touched on in the first part when he spoke of his death, resurrection, and the second advent or the second coming, right? In the person of the King of Kings, that they didn't really understand that a little while you shall see me. Right. Um, a little while and you shall not see me. And again, a little while and you shall see me. And it, uh, because I go to the father and they repeated that and add and because I go to the father and they ask themselves, what does this mean? We can't understand what it means. A little while. They were thinking about the time a little while. Imagine if Yeshua said, that's just I have more things to tell you, but you're not ready, you know, to, to, to handle them. And I mean, that's that's 2000 years. Well, how are we going to see that? Because he's going to raise us. Right. That generation, the generation who seek the face of the God of Jacob. But now that was a little bit more more theologically, I would think, um, challenging to understand. If you can understand the first, then now after Christ says this second thing to them to clarify what they was asking themselves about. His disciples said to him, lo, which is short for look now, now speakest thou plainly. But, but, but what did Christ say? Christ says in the future, in the person of the Father, I will speak to you plainly. His majesty spoke to us plainly about truth and right. Spoke to us plainly about the, the word and the work of Christ. Spoke to us plainly, right? Not in no parable. You don't see his majesty really, even really giving a parable, speaking bluntly and plainly about the situation as a good father, a good Abba would do so. Right. Um, now speakest thou plainly, but they're not saying that he spoke 2000 years ago plainly and speakest no proverb, but he was speaking a proverb. He was speaking according to the type, the Trinity, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Right. And the, and the speaking is the Holy Spirit. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things? So they wasn't sure about it before. <laughs> this is the disciples, but the disciples are a testimony of us. We can grow by growing in the knowledge of what they went through and how we also make those same humanistic um, mistakes, right? And how we can recognize the perfect and practice it. And needest not that any man should ask thee, but he's talking about the future. Now they think he's talking about right now, right? Um, by this, we believe in nominalin, nam and bamin, we admit that thou camest forth from God. So now they admit it. So they wasn't admitting before. These are the questions when you understand logic, divine logic and the logos. Yesus in verse 31, he answered them, do ye now, my men, do you now admit? Do you now admit in truth? Believe in the lower Anglo version of it. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come that ye shall be scattered every man to his own. 
and shall leave me alone. And yet I am, it's not the same as when Isaiah chapter 53, everyone will go their own way, right, astray, and shall leave me alone, leave the true, yes, was Christos, our black Lord and Savior alone, leave the true right faith alone and go in the false faith and false superstition, a lot of other kind of um, isms and schisms. And yet I am not alone. Yes, I said I'm not alone because the Father is with me. Right? So the Father and Son is truly one. These things I have spoken to you that in me, in I, in Jesus, in Isis, ye might have peace, shalom. You might have security, not insecure. Don't be insecure. Right? In the world, right? In the world, flesh and devil, in the world, ye shall have tribulation. That's a good segue. I actually want to touch on the B and B the burdens and the and the bondage of, of the Israelites, right? Because this time is like that time. That's why in Revelation talk about the song of Moses. Why are you talking about the song of Moses? They shall sing the song of Moses. Then they already come out of Egypt? Yeah, but what about spiritual Egypt? In the world, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. You know, be, be it's a whole state of mind. It's, a, it's spirituality. It's a, it's a whole spirit of mind. It's a, it's an irate. It's a vibe. Right, be of good cheer, not of not of negative, pessimistic. You understand? Be be of the positive attitude, right? That positive state of mind. It was have the faith that Yeshua demonstrated to us. Follow him. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the Babylonian world, the flesh, and the devil. And as he is, thus therefore, Silazi ergo. So are we in this world. I pray for, for you, your peace in his majesty, your shalom, your peace of mind, brothers and sisters. And all who have not, you understand, received the Christ of his majesty. Now is the time if one is, is willing. You understand if one is willing. And, and we want to go through a prayer, but we want to go through our, the manuscripts of the, of the faith so we can see what the righteous template of the faith of the King of Kings in Christ really is. But you receive it when you receive it in heart and you testify in, in, in your speech, right? You testify, you confess with, with the mouth, the opening of the mouth of the testimony, the true testimony of the King of Kings Christ. Shalom Arastafari.